والأرض بعد ذلك دحاها أخرج منها ماءها ومرعاها والجبال أرساها متاعا لكم ولأنعامكم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم Now in this lesson I'm going to be speaking about the ayah in the Qur'an, which some Muslims have interpreted to mean that the earth is egg-shaped. Now some Muslims might be a bit surprised that I don't believe this to be the case, that the Qur'an says that the earth is egg-shaped. So I'll be explaining the evidences regarding this. Now let's begin. So this is the ayah in question. وَالْأَرْضَ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ دَحَاهَا what some Muslims say is that because there's a word from the same root, which is al-udhiyu, which means the egg of an ostrich, therefore, because of this relationship, that this verb daha has an inbuilt meaning to mean not only to spread the earth, but to make it in the shape of an ostrich egg. Now, many non-Muslims have objected to this and they have rightfully pointed out this misinterpretation. Now the point here is that this verb daha, which is the past tense verb, it doesn't actually mean to make something in the shape of an ostrich egg. You won't find any single evidence in any of the classical texts to support this. None whatsoever. If for example we wanted to say that the earth was the shape of an ostrich egg, or to liken it to an ostrich egg. We would actually probably do something like this, and say, الْأَرْضُ كَالْعُدْحِي The earth like an ostrich egg. And we would use this particle, the calf, which is used for resemblance. But then the question is, how does it resemble it? There are many things about the egg which are different to the earth. I have never heard any scholar or read any tafsir or classical dictionary where the scholar says that it means that the earth is shaped like an ostrich egg. Never. Daha means in classical Arabic, he spread out or he expanded. And that's the general meaning of it. Although there are other words to mean to spread out and to expand. So the point is, what's the difference between this word and other words? A good way of understanding a word is to go to the way that the ancient Arabs used this word. How did they use it? It would give an idea of what Allah SWT meant. So the ancient Arabs actually used this word to explain the action of an ostrich preparing the ground or the nest before laying their eggs. So in the environment where ostriches live, the ground is very hard. So what happens is they start using their feet and their beaks to soften the ground, to prepare the ground before laying their eggs. So let's have a look at this just for a second. You can see how the ostriches are doing this. They're softening the land to prepare for laying their eggs. So this is a very important matter, a matter of survival, obviously. So they want to take extra care with their eggs. And Allah SWT actually uses this word to indicate his preparation. Preparation for us. And it's honoring for man. Now there are many aspects related to this ayah, grammatically and rhetorically that's used. So I'm not going to get into these details. There's a lot more that can be said. What I want to actually show here is that there's been a gross, gross misinterpretation of this ayah. The reason why is because Allah SWT explains what dahaha means actually. He explains it in the following ayat. Why are we interpreting it to mean this if Allah explains it? So the following ayat say, أَخْرَجَ مِنْهَا مَاءَهَا وَمَرْعَاهَا وَالْجِبَالَ أَرْسَاهَا So he extracted from it its water and its pasture and the mountains he said firmly. Now what's interesting about this is there's no conjunction. 
joining this ayah to what comes after it. If there was a wow, wa akhraja minha, then it would just be joined, so one after the other. He did this, and this, and this. But by not mentioning the wow, what this does actually is this becomes a clarifying sentence. Actually, these both of these, both of these are clarifying sentences of this ayah here. So it's known as a jumla bayaniya. I actually explain this concept in my advanced courses. But the point here is that if you want to know what dahaha means, it's akhraja minha ma'aha wa mar'aha wal jibala arsaha. So as we said, daha means to prepare the earth. And this is how Allah prepared the earth for us. And he says, Mata'an lakum wa li an'amikum as a provision for you and your livestock. So this interpretation is more in line with classical Arabic. Now my intention is not to belittle those Muslims who said this, but just to point out their mistake. And as Muslims, we should always be willing to accept that we are in the wrong and to accept the truth.